Hey, I bet that's better, isn't it? Can you hear me now? My apologies. I had my mic muted, so for the 36 people who have already tuned in, you couldn't hear anything because I had muted my mic. But anyway, once again, hey, welcome to Friday Night Live. This is the scoreboard guy, Guy Newcomb, alongside here for the next hour and one half. I hope everyone out there can hear me. So we will see what's going on. Let's just run through the scores we have right now with 11.03 remaining. Eleven oh three remaining in the fourth quarter. Rockbridge and Camden are all tied. Carthage and Joplin are in overtime at this point. They're all tied up. Charleston defeats Hay Tai twenty to eight. And let's go. Let's just get some scores here whilst we can. And again, I, I, I do apologize, but I'm having some issues here with my audio. So let's just play a commercial right now and see if I can't get this stuff figured out. My apologies. I'll have the avocado toast minus the avocado. So, toast. and a high-tech Chevy SUV. Why is Chevy making affordable vehicles connected by OnStar? It's so together, we can do more. We believe banking should make your life greater. It starts with affordable options to meet today's needs and tomorrow's dreams. From smart account options that fit your style to flexible loans for what comes next. It means convenient ways to access and manage your money whenever you need it and wherever you're headed. Most of all, it takes great support. Someone you can count on for trusted guidance and to be there for you every step of the way. Great options, great convenience, great support for life. Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Missouri Sports Network. Guy Nuka and I apologize for that, but we will run through the scores now as we have them right now. Tipton leads Fayette 34 to nothing in the third quarter. It's Lee Summit. They de they defeat Park Hill South fifty to ten. That has gone final. Platte Valley over South Holt sixty to twelve. Each Ach East Atchison defeats Stewartsville forty eight to nothing. It was Wright City over Veritas Christian forty five to nothing. SLU hangs on. They defeat Viani twenty one to twenty. Rockport in the third quarter leads Nottaway Valley forty four to thirty six. Saint Dominic. They defeat Riverview Gardens 28-24. Elsewhere, Seckman, they defeat Pattonville 27-13. Rittenauer over Oakville 38-0. Scores brought to you by Lyona Labor's Local 663. Hey, they remind us, hey, drive safely in those work zones. Those folks want to go home to their families as well. Elsewhere, Fox defeats Northwest 49-7. It was written hour over Oakville 38-0. Festus shuts out North County 31-0. Winnetonka over Lincoln 35-7. Washington in the fourth quarter leads the Liberty 56-34. Blue Springs in the third quarter on top of the number one ranked Rockhurst 
Hawklets, 30 to 13. And that last report at the half, Lafayette leads McClure 48 0. Final scores Perryville, they defeat Jefferson 42 to 36. Kearney over Green Valley 29 to 6. In the fourth quarter, Howell Central leads Timberland 27 to 14. They have gone final Eureka, and they stay unbeaten on the season. They defeat Rockwood Summit 36 to 7. East Buchanan over Penny 10 7. That is the final. Final score from Chaminade. DeSmet defeats Chaminade 44-7. Hillsboro, they defeat Windsor 64-24. We have reached out to Bill Sikarski, the Hillsboro head coach. Salem over Willow Springs 28-14. Elsewhere, final score, West Strand defeat, defeat County 39-22. At the half, Bolivar was on top of West Plains, 14-13. Wellington Napoleon in the fourth leads Oric, 44-0. Warsaw, they defeat Eldorado Springs, 61-0. Clinton, they get a victory over Versailles, 20-6. Bowling Green defeats Van Farr, 52-6. Valley, they shut out St. Genevieve, 53-0. Farmington in the fourth quarter leads Union 49 to 14. Also in the fourth quarter, Howe on top of Troy Buchanan 27 to 26. In the fourth, Thayer leads Kabul 60 to 6. And this just in with 7.54 remaining in the fourth quarter. Rockbridge gets a long run for a touchdown. They go up 27-21 right now with 7.58 pending the extra point. Elsewhere, Charleston, as I mentioned, they defeat Haytai 20-8. Brookfield over Gallatin 52-0. West Strand defeats Scotland County 39-22. East Buchanan over Penny 10-7. North Callaway defeats Louisiana 38-14. South Shelby over North Platte, 38 to nothing. St. Francis Borgia, they defeat Father Tolton, 24 to 14. Mount Grove gets a big win over Liberty, 44 to 24. And Lamar falls again as Nevada gets him, 20 to 19. The extra point is good by Rockbridge. So they are up now 28-21 to 21 with 7.58 remaining in the game. Scoreboard is always brought to you by Doke Propane. Doke Propane for all your propane needs. See the folks at Doke in Polk County and surrounding counties. So wherever you're listening from, hey, we encourage you. Hey, go to our Facebook page and like us on Facebook. Go to YouTube and subscribe. And anytime we go live, you will get the updates and be aware that we're going live. In eight-man football, it was Appleton City over Osceola 62-20. First, let's talk about last night's games. It was Marquette over Hazelwood East. 24 to 17. Nixa defeats Kickapoo 48 13. Parkview shuts out Springfield Central 48 0. And Wright City shuts out Veritas Christian 45 0. From tonight, an eight man football was Appleton City over Osceola 62 to 20. Concordia defeats Mound City 55 to 10. It was Mound, I'm sorry, it was Mound City. Concordia defeats Santa Fe 55 to 10. Mount City over DeKalb 50 to 28. Greenfield defeats Jasper 48 to 6. Lockwood shuts out Liberal 63 nothing. New Heights over Plattsburgh 54 to 24. Elsewhere in eight man football, Harden Central defeats Slater 60 to 12.
Platte Valley over South Holt, 60 to 12. It was Worth County over Stanbury, 58 to nothing. Page one, brought to you by the Chevy Leaders of the Ozark. Chevy Leaders of the Ozark sponsoring our Chevy Leaders of the Ozark Athletes of the Week. You can go to our website at MissouriSportsNetwork.com and pull up our Athletes of the Week each and every week of the school season. Page one, East Buchanan over Penny, 10 to 7. Brookfield over Gallatin, 52, 52 to nothing. Charleston defeats Haytai, 20 to 8. <clears throat> Elsewhere, Marionville over Pier City, 36 to 12. It was Salisbury over Marceline, 34 to 8. Ash Grove defeats Skyline, 34 to 14. South Shelby over North Platte, 38 to nothing. Bowling Green de defeats Van Farr, 52 to 6. Westran over Scotland County, 39 to 22. On page 3, Ava defeats Houston, 43 to 7. Butler over Cole Camp. Butler over Cole Camp, 40 to 6. It was Grandview over Herculaneum, 14 to 7. <clears throat> Sullivan over Herman, 20 to 12. Lafayette County defeats Holden, 42 21. Perryville over Jefferson, 42 to 36. Elsewhere, Nevada defeats Lamar 20 to 19. Mid Buchanan over Lathrop 19 to 6. Valley Catholic, they defeat St. Genevieve 53 to nothing. Expect to be hearing from Valley Catholic head coach Jed Nager here in just a minute or two. It was Warsaw over El Dorado Springs 61 to nothing. Page 3, Seneca defeats Carl Junction 56 to 6. Westminster Christian over Lutheran South 42 to 6. Forsyth defeats Reed Spring 40 to 14. Raytown South over Excelsior Springs 27 to 7. It was Hillsboro defeating Windsor 64 to 24. We have reached out to the head coach at Hillsboro, Bill Sukarski. And with five minutes and 39 seconds remaining, Camdenton gets a long pass for a touchdown. Pinning the extra point, they could tie it up here with 5.33 remaining. And we welcome to the show now the head coach of Valley Catholic, who I guess got disconnected, so maybe he'll try and call back. But Rock, or I'm sorry, Camden to now is attempting their field goal. And it is good. And we welcome to the show now the head coach of Valley Catholic, Judd Nager. Coach Nager, thanks for your time. All right. Thank you very much for uh, having me on tonight. And I apologize. I got to the phone call just a little bit late there. I know you've called That's twice. Okay. But, uh, Coach, a big win tonight over St. Genevieve. Tell us about the ball game. Oh, you know, our guys are doing a good job. Uh, you know, I think they're doing a good job. Monday through Thursday, getting themselves ready. And I think it showed on the field tonight. Uh, you know, Ryan Fogg had a big night throwing the ball. I think he was uh, 10 of 13 for 320 yards or something. Um, and I think he had four or five scores. And, you know, the defense limited them to right around 60 yards off. And so uh, it was a complete team win. Outstanding. Five and one. On the season, did you come out of tonight's contest relatively healthy? Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, knock on wood. We don't. Everybody's upright and ready to go, except for we got JD kid that's out. But other than that, uh, you got to be kind of happy that you got uh, you know fifty four of uh, fifty five guys out there ready ready to go this time of year. Outstanding, coach. You've got uh, Central Park Hills next week, 
and I know you haven't really had a chance really to see them, but you're familiar with them. What what are you going to have to do next week to come out on top? Well, you know, their coach as well as anybody out there, and the way it looks like they're going to get another last set of wins, so I think they're going to come in 5-1. and one, and uh, It'll be the conference championship against the returning, you know, class three state champion. So, uh, you know, there's, you know, not a lot more you can say about a ball game than that. No, that's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, you know, at what time, at what point during the season, now we're six, you know, we're 60% of the way through the regular season, uh, actually more than that because there's only nine regular season games, but at, at what time, at what point do you maybe start taking a peek at the districts to kind of look at matchups and, and making sure you got a home game throughout? Well, you know, you just kind of play the games. I don't really look at the seeding or nothing. Uh, you know, we played a the last week who, who was, you know, one of the competitors for that one seed. So that you know, that kind of gives you a little bit of a buffer there. If you do end up being the two seed and they're the one seed, you get to, you know, kind of jump them from that perspective. But, uh, you know, we're just trying to do what we try to do every year and uh, work on getting a little better. Well, outstanding. Well, Coach, uh, I greatly appreciate you being generous with your time here on a, on a big night for Valley Catholic, big win. Congratulations, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get to visit with you some more during the as the season goes on. All righty, man. Thanks. Hey, you bet, Coach. Thank you. Valley Catholic head coach uh, Judd Nager, they're kind enough to join us here. We've also lined up uh, Matt Webb from Maryville. He'll be joining us at 10. At 10.30, we're going to hear from Frank Tristan from Glendale as they get their first victory of the season. Elsewhere, uh, just some, some updates here coming in out of the green room. Coach Archer and Kent Mueller in the green room. Hey, want to want to go ahead and promote kind of cross promote our other shows we've got going on. Huddle Up is on every Thursday morning. Uh, we've got where are they now Wednesdays every Wednesday morning at seven. We're playing on Sports Kent Mueller. All of these part of our YouTube channel as well. You can go and watch any of the older <clears throat> uh, airings of those shows as well as at High School Game Day on today. I had a loaded show today with team coaches, football coaches, softball coaches, and our athlete of the week from. Lebanon High School, um, and also visit with uh, Stockton head coach Luke Rader today, and uh, nice visit with him. There is four minutes and 30 seconds left in the Rockbridge-Camdenton game. Clock is stopped at 4.30, all tied up. It is Rockbridge football at the Camdenton 45-yard line, second down and two as the ball was out of bounds. So the clock has stopped. Elsewhere, St. Francis Borgia over Father Tolton, 24-14. South Shelby defeats North Platte, 38 to nothing. It's Mountain Grove. That's a big win for Mountain Grove over Mountain View Liberty, 44-24. to And we had Coach Swafford on last week. Uh, probably won't bother him, him on back-to-back -back weeks, but that is a big win for his team. And Rockbridge, long pass, 40 yards down to the five-yard line. So it'll be first and goal for Rockbridge in a 28-28 to 28 game with 419 remaining in the game. You're listening to the Missouri Sports Network on MissouriSportsNetwork.com where everyone has a home field advantage. Going back and just updating some of the scores. And we've reached out to several coaches here tonight. Again, late in the game, it was Tipton over Fayette, 34-0. Lee Summit defeats Park Hill South, 50-10. In the fourth quarter, New Heights Christian. Uh, they are leading Plattsburgh, 60-28. Platte Valley over South Holt, 60-12. That's a final. East Atchison defeats Stewartsville. 48 nothing. It was Wright City over Ver Veritas Christian. That's a game from last night, 45 nothing. SLU hangs on. They defeat Viani, 21-20. In the fourth quarter, Rockport leads Nottaway Valley, 44-22. St. Dominic, they defeat Riverview Gardens, 28-24. Seckman, we've reached out to Coach Nick Bear from Seckman. Uh, but they defeat Pattonville 27 to 13. Rittenauer over Oakville 38 to nothing. 
Final scores, Fox, they defeat Northwest, Cedar Hill, 49 to seven. Elsewhere, a final, Festus defeats North County, 31 to nothing. Winnetonka over Lincoln, 35 to seven. It was Washington, they defeat Liberty. I'm sorry, they're up in the fourth quarter late. Washington on top of Liberty, 56 to 34. Elsewhere, a final and maybe an upset as Blue Springs knocks off the number one ranked team in the state, Rockhurst, 30 to 13. Elsewhere, final score, Perryville defeats Jefferson, 42 to 36. Kearney, they defeat Grain Valley, 29 to six. In the fourth quarter, Fort Zumal South leads North Point, 35 to, or 37-35. In the fourth quarter, House Central leads Timberland 27-14. to Eureka, they defeat Rockwood Summit 36-7. to And I, I reached out yet again to head coach Jacob Sumner, and uh, we'll see if we can't get Eureka on. But they're kind of rolling right now. So he's uh, maybe a little superstitious. Final score, East Buchanan over Penny 10-7. DeSmet defeats Chaminade 44-7. Hillsboro, they defeat Windsor 64-24. Salem over Willow Springs 28-14. West Strand defeats Scotland County 39-22. Bolivar, they hang on. They defeat West Plains 20-3. In the fourth quarter, Wellington Napoleon leads Oric 44-0. Warsaw defeats El Dorado Springs 61-0. It was Clinton over Versailles, 20 to 6. Van Farr, they defeat, I'm sorry, they fall to Bowling Green today, 52 to 6. Elsewhere, St. Genevieve Valley, and we just read, read uh, or interviewed or visited with Coach uh, Jed Nager. They went 53 to nothing. It was Farmington. We welcome to the show now the head coach of the Sekman football team, uh, Coach Nick Bear. Coach Bear, thanks for joining us. Hey, happy to be here. Coach, you get a big win tonight. Tell us about the game. Team. You know, I know they're coming in with a record, you know, uh, one and four, but they play a tough schedule. Marquette, Lafayette, Fort Dumont North, uh, Kirkwood. So, you know, we knew we were coming up against a good team, and they're fast and athletic. And, you know, game kind of started out with us uh, scoring early, you know, put the ball up in the air, and, and, and then they score with a fake punt. So it's kind of back and forth early to get 14 to 13 and a half and kind of put it to our guys at halftime. And uh, they did a great job responding, and we scored – uh, the next two unanswered points ended up closing out 27-13, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Coach, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the young men who kind of stood out for you today. Yeah, you know, part of it was the offense. You know, we're down our best back this week. Uh, Brady Ambrose is out, so hopefully he'll be back next week. Our second back <clears throat> broke his uh, broke his ankle on the first drive of the game, uh, Mason Fowler. So, you know, we're kind of down to our third, fourth, and fifth guy, and and they stepped up. Lyman did a great job, um, and, and we were able to get it done tonight. <clears throat> so 6-0, and oh, that's got to feel good. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. It, it, it never gets old. You know, we kind of told our guys a lot of our games this year where, you know, we've been up at halftime 30 nothing, or, you know, a couple scores. That's just not reality. You know, tonight we found ourselves in a dog fight, and it was fun to see our guys come together, work through it, um, and get it done in the second half. You got Parkway South. Uh, next week, what do you know about them? Uh, you know, conference opponent. Um, you know, we, so we, we've been playing them a lot lately. Uh, they actually play Saturday. We're playing them on, on a Thursday, so they're going to have a very short week, you know, along with us. And they've got a good tailback. They'll be athletic. Their line's pretty big. Um, but we'll be ready. Coach, at what point uh, during the year, and maybe not ever, but you kind of maybe start taking a peek at the district standings just to make sure that you're going to get – you know, home field advantage at some point. 
Oh, we started peaking last week. I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> uh, kind of seeing how the landscape would work out in Class 6 District 1. You know, you got Limburg, uh, Jackson, very tough teams. And then you've got teams we've already played in Oakville, Northwest, and Fox. Kind of seeing where it plays out. And it's kind of one of those things. If we take care of our business, we're going to be right where we were last year and right where we want to be. Now, Sam, did you come out of tonight's game relatively healthy? You know, like I said, Mason Fowler, probably our number two back, number three back, great kid, quarterback, running back type kid for us, uh, ended up breaking his ankle. So, you know, that's hard to see. Um, and, you know, we're hoping to use this short week here to get a little healthy in a few other positions. But, you know, we're not playing chess out there, so those things happen sometimes. Well, outstanding. Well, Coach, uh, I greatly appreciate you being part of the show. We have a rule here that once you make your third appearance, you, you are officially a, a friend of the show. So you've been a friend oh. of the show for a while. Oh, good. Yeah, I need all the friends I can get. <laughs> Coach, hey, congratulations on the win, and, and we will talk to you soon. Appreciate it. You bet. Have a great evening. Yep. Second head coach, Nick Bear, and, you know, that district he was talking that he's in, he's 6-0. I'm not sure what Lindbergh did tonight. Um, they were 4-1 going into tonight. Um but Sekman at, at six and zero, they're in first place. Lindbergh is the second, and Jackson is at third. And they, had, I think, they had a big matchup tonight as well. Uh, there and uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to text and everything else. We're just uh, getting back with uh, Coach William Duke there, at Tipton, as they got a win tonight. Going to try and get him on the show at. This evening at some at some point we will have him on doctor I should say Doctor Duke um, but yeah and the northwest Northwest Cedar Hills at the bottom of that of that district there there's just the six teams in that district and we will um, we'll run through some districts here if we have time tonight we're starting to hear back from coaches now. Rockbridge gets in the end zone again, so with a minute 49 to play in the fourth quarter, it is Camden ball. They are down 35 to 28 to Rockbridge. The ball is on the Rockbridge 37-yard line. First and 10 for Camdenton. And the clock is stopped right now with 151 remaining. And the snap. Quarterback is going to take off and run. He's going to try to get to the out-of-bounds line. And he does not make it, and he does not make a first down. So the clock will run at under a minute and a half now to play in this contest. 35-28 Rockbridge on top of Camdenton with a minute 27 and counting. Well, now Camdenton has called a timeout to stop the clock. Second down and two in the fourth quarter. And we will run down some of the scores, kind of updating here. Teams have gone, starting to go, go final. Sullivan over Herman, 20 to 12. Nevada hangs on and they defeat Lamar, 20 to 19. Now, if you guys are out there, you're, you are watching on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, Hey, send us a chat. Pops up right on my screen. You got a question, a comment, or a query? Just let us know you're listening here on Restream. This is the Missouri Sports Network at MissouriSportsNetwork.com, where everyone has a home field advantage. And we welcome to the show now Maryville head football coach Matt Webb. Coach Webb, thanks for joining us. You're welcome, guy. I always appreciate uh, coming on. Coach, you get a big win tonight. Tell us a little bit about tonight's contest. Yeah, we played uh, Benton out of St. Joe, um, and um, you know, that, uh, we we ended up uh, final score forty nine to seven. Um, you know, it's a good uh, conference win for us, a good MEC win. Uh, and we're able to put kind of two back to back here with a win over Cameron and then a win over Benton. And um, <clears throat> again, just uh, thought we, we did a good job of kind of you know hitting that uh, <clears throat> after uh, week six type of time in our season to where um, we've kind of had some youth and not only in our defensive backfield, but um, kind of new skill positions, on, on especially on the offensive side. And um, just feel like we're executing a little better and, and uh, running the football well. 
kind of got a you know in our backfield style and our wing tee style sets on offense, um, kind of a multitude of backs that are, that are really, really physical. And, um, just feel like that's that's kind of made a difference the last couple of weeks. And then, um, our, again, like I said, our, our defensive backfield's coming up and doing a good job in their, in their run fits. And, you know, when they have one senior, um, you know, kind of coming back in from last year's team and Cole Zarbano, he started off the night defensively with a pick six for us and kind of got us rolling and, um, that, that kind of helps in the first quarter and, and kind of fed off that and kind of pulled away uh, 35 nothing at halftime. But I'm um, just proud of the way our guys are playing in all three phases tonight. Guys come out of tonight's game, you know, healthy? Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, that time of the year where everybody's kind of got some nicks and bruises. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you just never know what's going to be the next man up mentality. You know, we've kind of dealt with that the last couple of weeks with, with, you know, some – some key players for us kind of, you know, you know, thankfully not being, um, you know, season ending, but um, getting them back at certain times. And, um, you know, if we're going to need to be healthy, you didn't come around in you know, district time and have to make a good playoff run. So um, we've got a really good athletic training program and um, those guys are getting in and getting healthy. But, uh, you know, we, you know we're, we're as healthy as anybody is right now. Coach, you guys, have, you, you talked about your conference. Uh, schedule a little bit, kind of handicap that right now. What uh, what was the conference look like right now through week six? Well, St. Pius is you know kind of um, got the you know kind of the oh the ring of the ring of the roost or kind of being able to have play as this path to kind of win out and then win it outright. Um, you know the but you know with, with them beating us a couple weeks ago and uh, a few weeks ago um, certainly a, a extremely talented team and um, you know statewide I'm not sure. I don't know how much, you know, everybody kind of knows, but they, they announced, you know, last last week that this will be the last year in the NEC um, in football. Um, they've elected to not play a, an NEC football schedule anymore. Um, and they certainly, you know, have kind of grown that program to where, you know, they've got 116 kids on the team and, you know, um, 17 coaches and, and certainly do a good job in that Northland area of, of attracting really good talent. And um, they just like, you know, they're, they're, they're class five, you know, from a mission standpoint, the way they classify them this year with their success factor. And um, so um, they've kind of got probably the, the, the clearest path to, to maybe win it outright. You know, obviously they've got a, a tough game with, with, with Savannah coming down the road and, um, and uh, you know, another good quality opponent there that, um, you know, that you week in and week out that they'll have to survive. But I would say they'd probably have the inside path to, to win the conference right now. Coach, and you've got a, a very good team next week as well. You're going to take on a Lutheran North team on Saturday of next week. Um, what do you know about them? Well, it doesn't take uh, much to know much about them. I mean, they are quite – they're even they may be ranked class four, but, you know, I mean, we're just a little old class three school up here in the Boot Hills of Northwest Missouri and the old cornfields, but – I can't imagine there being many teams in the state of Missouri that have more talent than they do on the field. I mean, my goodness, they just – every position, you know, is extremely athletic, extremely well coached. You know, they – we've played them, you know, last uh, you know last couple of years. And, you know, they're just very impressed with what, what the way he does things. You know, I, I think going in this game last year, nobody really gave us a, a fighting chance to win. You know, they're you know, one of the top-ranked teams in class four, extremely talented. Um, and, you know, we were able to kind of go over there and claw out a win. And, and um, you know, certainly it's been competitive. They're, they're, they're extremely talented and they're an extremely well-coached squad in class four. And, you know, that's it's kind of the schedule where you've been dealt here. You know, you play from everywhere. You're going to play a, you know, a top ranked team in Blair Oaks at the beginning of the year. And then you're going to, you know, you play a good class four team in Pleasant Hill. And then you got St. Pius throughout the year. That's now class five. And then it was in our conference. And then, you know, Coach – Coach Webb, who's also the athletic director here, <laughs> um, schedules uh, Luther North week seven. So I don't want anybody to complain to except to bear when, when we look at scheduling. But, um, we, we, you know, we feel like, you know, uh, you combine them and, and our tough schedule, it will really prepare us well for, you know, a district run. Um, this game next week doesn't really hurt us in our district standing much, um, you know, with laying up. Uh, a level, um, but it's great competition and it gets good people. And uh, it's kind of a unique thing to play on Saturday afternoons like the big boys do. You know, it's, uh, it's a fun environment. We kind of meet at a neutral site and chill a coffee um, about halfway for close to halfway for both of us. And that way nobody gets back too late. Um, it's kind of a unique thing, but uh, kids have a lot of fun with it. You bet. You mentioned 
you know, preparing for the postseason here. You guys uh, obviously are in a good district as well. Uh, you're sitting atop that right now. At what point do you kind of take a peek at, at that district, those district standings? I mean, well, you know, you look at them, I think, every week and kind of see who won, who lost. Um, you know, there's some familiar opponents within our district that we play, you know, throughout the year, whether that be, you know, uh, Joe Cothy, a Cameron, um, so those, you know, type schools that are, we play within our conference. But at the same time, um, you look and see what Richmond's doing week in, week out. You look and see what some of the other schools are doing. And, and you know, I think any coach that, you know, again, I'm, I'm the first one to preach 1-0. You know, I mean, the only thing we're focusing on is a really good Lutheran North squad. But, you know, any coach that comes on here and says they don't look at district standings every week, I think it's a liar. So um, you kind of look and see what the possibilities might be and who's going to play where and what your home games look like and who's going to get to buy. And, and you know, you, you, you look at those things that, and, you know, when you get to this time of the year and you, just, you, know, you look at possible matchups and, and then where you stand. Well, outstanding. Well, Coach, uh, as always, we greatly appreciate you being generous with your time. And uh, I'm going to have to get up to Maryville again. I, I was up there. Uh, last year, before the season started, got to meet with a lot of your coaches there from, from your high school and some other high schools around the area. And need to get back up and do that again. But uh, I, I, I you, really, came up, you came up in the summertime. You, you went northwest Missouri. You got to come up around Thanksgiving, you know, somewhere where it's a little bit, a little bit colder, and you get a little bit, of, you know, experience of some, some Nebraska, Iowa, you know, weather up here. If the wind, that wind's always blowing, and. Um, it's never as warm as it, whatever the temperature says. So, um, you know, we've got a brand new facility here with the turf field, video board, and, um, some great stadium, you know, environment. And, uh, you yeah, know, we're, we're, we're really fortunate and blessed to live in a community that loves high school sports and loves supporting um, our kids. And, and um, I'm you know, extremely proud to be the coach and athletic director. So, yeah, you're always welcome to come up here, guy. I'll take you out to Pizza Ranch or something. We'll go get a buffet. All right. Coach, well, I appreciate it. Hey, have a great evening. Enjoy the win, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. You bet. Maryville head football coach uh, Matt Webb, they're kind enough to join us here on the show. Um, we will t step away, take a quick timeout, and then we will come back. After that, we'll run through the scores again. We'll be joined by Alan Hilliard from Alan Hilliard Sports around 10-15, and then 10-30 we'll hear from Glendale football coach Frank Tristan as he gets – his first uh, victory as the Glendale head football coach. Rockbridge, just update Rockbridge and Camdenton. Camdenton does get a safety, but following a turnover with 16 seconds left, it's Rockbridge up 35 to 30. They went for it on fourth and 16. They threw it out of the back of the end zone for a safety, but that there is a personal foul called against Camdenton, and I'm assuming that will be assessed on the kickoff because it was well after the play. So they will have the opportunity to kick off or punt following this safety. But now it's a five-point game. So if you get in the end zone, game over. Not going to overtime here. No way to score five points on one play in high school or any level of football. Hey, we'll take a timeout. We'll come back and visit with Alan Hilliard Sports after these messages. Street Inn is located in the heart of Springfield on historic Walnut Street, just blocks away from the Missouri State campus, Hammonds Field, Great Southern Arena, and downtown Springfield. The Walnut Street Inn features newly remodeled rooms, breakfast served daily, and a friendly accommodating staff. The Walnut Street Inn is also a great venue for private events. Book your stay or get more information at walnutstreetin.com or call 417-864-6346. Imagine a bank that goes where you go. Creating seamless solutions for every step in your financial journey, allowing you to manage your money the way you want to with a banking relationship that makes every day extraordinary. Imagine a world full of possibilities, always within reach. Central Bank, we do banking better. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. 
We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 290,000 participants here in Missouri who take part in high school sports or activities. Hey, welcome back to Friday Night Live here on the Missouri Sports Network, MissouriSportsNetwork.com, where everyone has a home field advantage. We go now to Alan Hilliard from Alan Hilliard Sports, who's making his long trek back from Glendale High School to his house after covering the Glendale uh, Waynesville game and uh, a little bit of a surprise there. Glendale played very well. Glendale had a very good game. Quarterback Newberry, he was part of at least six touchdowns in that ball game. I think he may have been part of every touchdown because he either ran them in or threw the pass. I don't think there was an actual rushing touchdown by Glendale in the ball game from a running back. Well, and and, uh, and this uh, just a real quick update here: the Rockbridge Camdenton game has gone final as Rockbridge hangs on, and they defeat Camdenton thirty-five to thirty. So Rockbridge gets a win there. That was one of the games I was watching along with the Joplin Carthage game throughout the night. Yeah, did you did you ever see a final from Joplin Carthage? I did not. We went, our game ended before that, and I packed everything up. I probably should have kept monitoring that ball game, but it was overtime, and neither team had scored yet. Yeah, they may still be playing. I'll have to uh, check in on that game as well. Rogersville comes back, and they – they defeat uh, Hillcrest. They were down most of that game, and they get uh, they get a get big comeback win, 29-23 over Hillcrest. I'm not seeing the Rogersville score yet, but I bet it will pop up here pretty quick. And it will, it is. Carthage wins 23-20 to in overtime. And that's from the green room there in Archer. That's, I didn't have to look that up. but So they get a now, win, 23-20. See, I was going to – if Joplin would have won that game, they would have guaranteed themselves a uh, second place in the district. But that still puts them in that limbo mode tied with Ozark right now. Yeah, and Ozark, uh, they got, well, of course, they got, they got handled pretty well by Lebanon tonight. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Any other scores surprise you? Well, I've seen a very good Lamar Nevada game again. Lamar has had some very close games this year. Yeah, and I'm not sure what's going on there. I know at the beginning of the season, they had one of their better players was out uh, with injury, so he may still be out. Um, but Nevada being state ranked, I mean, that's still a very quality, you know, ball game, win or lose that, especially just by one point difference. Right. Anything else kind of jump out at you? Um, there were some rather high scores here, but Republic and Web City was the other one in the COC that kind of surprised me how close it was throughout the entire game. Yeah, I was watching that game here, and uh, it you know it was kind of back and forth. You know, Web City, they went three and out on their first three possessions, and it looked like Republic was going to run away, and they were going up and down the field, but they got one touchdown and missed the extra point. And that kind of that kind of led to a situation where then it, went, it was 6 nothing at half, and then Web City comes out, first play from scrimmage. Uh, they go about 74 yards for a touchdown to go up 7-6. And then it was just kind of back and forth from there. Yeah, something that I don't know if many people appreciate, but I graduated in 05, and you couldn't just go watch a high school game on the computer. But now, especially the COC, I mean, nearly every team puts out nearly a, you know, a top-quality broadcast of their football games. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm sitting here in the in the studio, and I've got I've got six screens, two TVs, um, 
and four computer screens set up. And so I've been watching. I've watched. Well, I've got five TVs. Um, I watched a little bit of the Smithville uh, Platte County game. Um, I've watched the Camden Rockbridge game with, with just got over, and then also watched Lebanon, uh, the Lebanon game. So um, an opportunity here that you know for what we do, it's kind of you know normally you'd have to go out and find scores, but and it's really good, especially when you're broadcasting a game and you can you know, pull up literally the live video of another game going on in the conference and kind of give updates on close matchups and things like that. That's just one of the things instead of having to go searching like you used to on a message board for scores. Yeah, I don't even know if the message boards even exist anymore. I mean, I don't know. I haven't, what were they, MoSports.net back in the day or something? Yeah, there was something like that. We just got another final to Soto. Defeats Fredericktown 45 to 20, St. Clair over St. James 42 14, and Dexter defeats Kelly 48 to 8. And uh, Central out of Cape, they defeat Potosi 34 to 26, and Pacific over Owensville 62 to 14. So scores continue to come in. And with the weather like it has been, kind of unseasonably warm. Uh, this time they had some water breaks tonight that they were forced to take. And so that made every a lot of games go longer. And then you've got the Camerton game that just got over, but that's because Camerton's got that wide open <clears throat> offense and they throw the ball all over the field. Um, but you didn't have too bad conditions down in Springfield. It was 87 degrees, but really wasn't too humid today. It was kind of a beautiful day for football. Didn't have any, I don't think we had any injury stoppages or water breaks or nothing during the game. Just uh, kind of a perfect day for football, really. You bet. Well, where are you at next week? I am at Waynesville as the Tigers host the probably one of the best teams in Missouri, the Nixa Eagles. Ooh. Waynesville Tigers, by the way. All right. All right. Well, hey, we may, may jump back on here with you at the end of the show, but we need to go through the scoreboard and read off a bunch of scores here with some of them just having gone final. And, uh, and we've got uh, actually have Glendale head coach uh, Frank Tristan coming up at 1030. We've reached out to the Rogersville coach, uh, Mark Talbert, to see if he's able to join us. They get a win over Hillcrest tonight. But uh, Alan, hey, Thanks for checking in and uh, safe travel home. And we'll holler at you either later on in the show or after the show. All right. Appreciate it. Tell the coach you did a good job tonight there. All Talk right. You. you bet. Thanks, Alan. That was Alan Hilliard from Alan Hilliard Sports. There's a lot of games at, at every level uh, there. Salem defeats Willow Springs 28 to 24. Blair Oaks over Blue Valley Southwest out of Kansas 59 to 28. Let's check our score stream. As always, you can go to scoreboardguy.net. Actually, I probably just need to go to MissouriSportsNetwork.com, and you got a whole host of things. You can click on, click on some college scores, college scoreboards. Uh, you've got the On Deck Show with d Row and, and Arch that's on every week as well. Uh, you've got the... Where are they now? Wednesdays. You've got the Athletes of the Week, uh, the interviews that we conduct with Athletes of the Week, the Teams of the Week. Uh, and then you just click on the scoreboard and you go right to into scoreboardguy.net for all the high school football scores. And as I mentioned, hey, send us a chat. I mean, there's several hundred people listening right now. Where are you listening from? What game were you at? What game tonight surprised you? on the scoreboard let's refresh this page and go back and see what we have at this point <clears throat> as we make our way back up to the top of the screen here still haven't updated the tipton game but i'm, I'm assuming that's a final and they won but i don't know the final elsewhere is norborn over slater 60 to 12. Lee Summit defeats Park Hill South 50 to 10. 
New Heights Christian, they defeat Plattsburgh 60 to 34. Platte Valley over South Hole 60 to 12. You're listening to Friday Night Live here on the Missouri Sports Network. And as always, the Missouri State Highway Patrol remind us, hey, take that three seconds and buckle up. It's three seconds that could save your life. Be safe, be smart, and be here tomorrow. Also presented by Lyuna Labor's Local 663, who reminds us, hey, drive safely in those work zones. Those folks want to go home to their families as well. Also presented by the Bank of Billings. Bank of Billings established in 1889, the oldest bank in Christian County. Getting back to the scores, it was East Atchison over Stewartsville, 48-0. Bishop LeBlond, they defeat Kansas City East Christian, 64-24. Wright City over Veritas Christian last night, 45-0. SLU defeats Vianney, 21-20. Excuse me, it's Rockport over Nottoway Valley, 66-42. St. Dominic defeats Riverview Gardens, 28-24. Seckman over Pattonville, 27-13. Rittenauer over Oakville, 38-0. It was Fox defeating Northwest, 49-7. Festus over North County, 31-0. Winnetonka, they defeat Lincoln out of Kansas City, 35-7. Washington over Liberty, 56-34. I don't know if that's gone final yet, but that was late in the fourth quarter. Final, Blue Springs, they defeat Rockhurst, 30-13. Lafayette over McClure, 55 to nothing. McClure defeats Jefferson. I'm sorry, Perryville defeats Jefferson, 42 to 36. Carney over Grain Valley, 29 to 6. It was Fort Zumwalt South over North Point, 35 to or 37 to 35. House Central defeats Timberland, 27 to 14. Eureka over Rockwood Summit, 36 to 7. East Buchanan defeats Penny 10-7. It was DeSmet over Chaminade 44-7. Crystal City defeats Roosevelt 22-20. It was Oak Park over St. Joe Central 52-13. Hillsboro defeats Windsor 64-24. Salem over Willow Springs 28-14. Belton defeats Chrisman 27-20. Elsewhere, Western, Western defeats Scotland County 30, or, yeah, 39-22. Lawson over West Platte 34-15. Bolivar defeats West Plains 20-3. Bolivar kind of getting on a roll now. Playing well. Wellington Napoleon over Oric 44-0. It was Warsaw over El Dorado Springs 61-0. Clinton defeats Versailles. 20 to 6. It was Bowling Green over Van Farr, 52 to 6. Valley Catholic shuts out St. Genevieve, 53 0. Farmington over Union, 49 to 21. KIPP Kansas City, they defeat Turner, 34 to 6. Troy Buchanan, they hang on, they defeat Howe, 34 27. There, 70. Kabul 6. Summit Christian defeats University Academy 24 to 21. Stratford over Hollister 56 to 18. The Stratford's rolling. That's 6 and 0 for the Indians. Worth County over Stanbury 58 to nothing. Liberty North, they defeat Staley 54 to 28. With St. Michael over Van Horn. Van Horn. 30 to 20. Rolla defeats St. Mary's 35 31. St. Pius the 10th, they defeat St. James Thunder out of Lenexa, Kansas 27 to 20. Elsewhere, St. Clair in the fourth quarter at last report, leading St. James 42 to 14. That's probably going final. 
Also in the fourth, St. Charles over St. Charles West, 40 to 27. That's probably going final. Fairgrove, they defeat Springfield Catholic, 43 to 7. Southern Boone over Eldon, 39 to 15. South Shelby shuts out North Platte, 38 0. South Callaway defeats Harrisburg, 32 to 22. Platt County over Smithville. And I watched that right here in my studio, 51 to 14. You can go back to high school game day and you can see the interview with Smithville head coach Josh Spear. Ash Grove defeats Skyline 34 to 14. It was Stockton over Sherwood, 57 to 14. And go back to the high school game day again, and you can uh, hear that interview with Stockton Tigers head football coach Luke Rader. Carruthersville. <coughs> Over Scott City, 28 nothing. With Schuyler County defeating Southwest, 20, 70 to 22. Salisbury over Marceline, 34 to 8. <coughs> Rock Bridge, as I mentioned, that just gone final. They defeat Camdenton, 35 to 30. Richmond over Carrollton, 56 to 7. And in a battle. Republic hangs on, and they defeat Webb City 15-13. to First time in their school history they've beaten Webb City in back-to-back -back seasons. Actually, back-to-back -back games because they played them in the uh, state tournament last year in a, a relatively very similar game. Forsyth over Reed Spring 40-14. to Lee Summit West over Ray Peck 21-14. Ray more peculiar now 0-6. Something peculiar going on. Putnam County over Polo, 22-20. to 20. Albany defeats Princeton, 96-46. to 46. Pleasant Hill over Harrisonville, 41-28. to 28. Pembroke Hill defeats Hogan Prep, 47-8. to 8. St. Joe Christian over Pattonsburg, 70-38. Paris over Knox County, 60 to 20. Pacific over Owensville, 62 to 14. Lebanon defeats Ozark, 42 to 21. It was Orchard Farm over Winfield, 35 7. Warnsburg defeats Odessa, 50 to 42. Oak Grove over Center, 44 0. Northwest defeats North Shelby, 52 42. Was Rich Hill over Northland Christian 60 to 28? North Callaway defeats Louisiana 38 to 14. Neosho, they defeat Willard 49 to 14. Neosho's played well this season. Mount Vernon, they hang on. They defeat Cashville in a back and forth game 35 to 28. Montgomery County defeats Mark Twain 40 to 16. Monroe City over Palmyra 36 to 20. Was Moberly over Marshall, 42 to 8. Sarcoxy defeats Miller, 28 to 22. We've got Trenton and Milan. It says final score here, 28 to 28. That's not possible. So a misprint there as well. And we welcome to the show now Glendale head football coach Frank Tristan. Coach Tristan, thanks for joining us. Yeah, you bet. Coach, big win tonight. Uh, what's what's it feel like to get the first one at your alma mater? <laughs> yeah, it was good. I, I think the, the kids are really excited. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the ball game. I understand your quarterback had a, a really big game. Yeah, I, I tell you what, the our, our defense. You know what Waynesville does? They kind of do a single wing, and our defense really stepped up and and did a great thing. I mean, I was really proud of those guys. And then our quarterback. We kind of felt all week that we could take some advantage of some things, and he did. He was uh, – Cash was really accurate uh, throwing seam routes, and uh, we were really proud of that. Uh, he probably had some throws he wishes he had back, but uh, what really opened us up in that third quarter was his, his legs. Extended some drives, run the ball, um, and then kind of made them balance up again, and, and then he hit a couple big throws. So, yeah, Cash played really well. Did you come out of tonight's game relatively healthy? We did. As a matter of fact, just before I got on the phone here, I, I talked to our trainer, and he said that was the first time I didn't have to go out in the field this year. So <laughs> uh, that was a that was a win for us in another area. 
Well, outstanding. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations on this win. And what uh, what do you feel like you're doing well right now? And I know it's a it's a new system coming into a group of, of kids that are unfamiliar with it going into the season. Uh, are there some things where you kind of feel like you're turning the corner? I do. I think our, you know, offensive line wise, we're, we're going to the right people. You know, they've never run block before. And then when you see different defenses every week, you know, just getting to the right people is a huge part of that equation. And so, you know, we're, we're doing that. Uh, we're picking up when, when teams are blitzing, we're, we're protecting the quarterback better. Um, I, I felt this, this game, you know, regardless of any opponent, this game was our best at just, um, spreading the ball around a little bit. Uh, sometimes we get real focused on just a couple people. And uh, I, I felt like the quarterback wise and, and offensively coaching, we did a much better job of getting guys the football. Um, and we have some talented kids. We just need to get them in open space. And so we did that well. And, and this was the first uh, second game that I really felt we fit well defensively. All of our guys were going to their fits. You know, if you get gapped a couple times, that's not so good. <laughs> so we uh, we started to really fit and start to learn the defense a little bit with our younger guys. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's good to win, but you want to just play well. And that's one of the things I felt like we're continuing to play better. Was the was the weather at all an issue tonight with it being so warm? You know, uh, it's funny. I told the guys in our in our pregame uh, team meeting, I said the warm up is going to be the hottest part of the game. Uh, and it really, it really was at about seven o'clock. It, it, the wind kind of picked up just a little bit, and man, it kind of got cool. It was a beautiful night. It really was outstanding. Well, you've got to, uh, an Ozark team next week at Ozark. Uh, obviously, a little bit familiar with them, you know, having been at Willard. But uh, what are you going to have to do next week to come out on top? Well, I, I think offensively, we'll continue. But they have to be balanced. Um, you know, we haven't run Jalen very much. Jalen Lockett. You know, he's had two 150-yard games, and we didn't run him very much tonight. Uh, I think we'll have to be a little bit more balanced offensively. And then, you know, defensively, they do a, they do a ton of stuff. They're, they're good at creating some mismatches. We're just going to have to be real disciplined um, defensively. And, and, <laughs> and we'll have to be able to – special teams, we've had a couple blunders, which, you know, when you're one in five, those kind of things happen. And so we just got to clean up those little special teams things because – Close ball games, that really gets dangerous. It does indeed. Well, Coach, hey, a big congratulations on you. Look forward to uh, hearing you talk about your team at the Springfield Area Quarterback Club, Bambinos, and I uh, always enjoy you being there. And uh, um, Art, Art Haynes, I know he had some nice words to say to you about the weather. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, no, we appreciate it, Guy, and I appreciate what you do for uh, high school sports. It's awesome. All right. Coach, thank you so much. Have a great evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, you too. Bye. Bye. Coach Frank Tristan um, from Glendale, kind enough to join us. And the weather, that's just his wife is the is the weather uh, lady on TV for Color 10, I believe. So that was, a, I shouldn't have made that kind of an inside joke, but uh, now it's an outside joke. So anyway, Glendale remaining, they're at Ozark next week, then they're at Lebanon, and then they finish up with Nixon. So three tough games coming up for, for the Glendale Falcons. And as you look at their district right now, um, their district, uh, Branson sits atop. That district, Branson is now 6-0. and Republic's 5-1. and Parkview is 3-3. Three and three. Willard is 2-4. and four. And then Glendale, who is 1-5. But they can't jump Willard because that's – one of their losses. But Hillcrest is at the bottom of that at one and five, and Springfield Central is 0 and 6 in that district. All right, let's run through the scoreboard again. I know scores continue to come in as they get updated. And I, we have most of the scores. And by morning, we'll have all the scores. And if we don't have it, it didn't happen. But you're listening to the Missouri Sports Network at MissouriSportsNetwork.com. Let's run through the scores. Then we'll hear from Tipton head coach of William Duke, Dr. Duke, here in a few minutes. It was Norborn over Slater, 60-12. to 
Lee Summit defeats Park Hill South 50 to 10. It was New Heights Christian over Plattsburgh 60 to 34. Platte Valley defeats South Holt 60 to 12. It's each Atchison over Stewartsville 48 to nothing. Bishop LeBlond over Kansas City East Christian 64 24. Wright City shuts out Veritas Christian last night 45 0. Slew over Viani 21 20. Rockport defeats Nottaway Valley 66 to 42. St. Dominic over Riverview Gardens 28 24. Seckman remains undefeated. They defeat Pattonville 27 13. Drittenauer over Oakville 38 0. Fox defeats Northwest 49 to 7. It was Festus over North County 31 0. Melville defeats McClure North 24 to 16. Winnetonka over Lincoln 35 to 7. Washington over Liberty. Wentzville, I believe, 56 to 34. Blue Springs defeats Rockers 30 to 13. Maybe the surprise score of the night uh, for me. Park Hill over Liberty. 21 to 17. Lafayette Wildwood defeats McClure 55 0. It was Perryville over Jefferson 42 to 6 or 42 to 36. Carney defeats Grand Valley 29 to 6. It was for Zumwalt South over North Point 35 37. House Central defeats Timberland 27 to 14. Eureka defeats Rockwood Summit. 36 to 7 it was East Buchanan over Penny 10 7. DeSmet defeats Chaminade 44 to 7. Crystal City over Roosevelt 22 to 20. Oak Park over St. Joe Central 52 to 13. It was Hillsboro over Windsor 64 24. Salem defeats Willow Springs 28 14. Belton over Chrisman 27 to 20. It was Westran over Scotland County, 39-22. West Platte defeats Lawson. I'm sorry. Lawson defeats West Platte, 35-15. Bolivar over West Plains, 20-3. Wellington Napoleon, that's still in the third quarter. That game's got to be over. And I'm assuming Wellington Napoleon won because they were winning 44 to nothing. Elsewhere, a final Warsaw, and they continue to roll. They defeat El Dorado Springs, 61 to nothing, And I think they're hanging on to that one seed in that district with Lamar. And Lamar may have dropped to a three seed at this point. They'll get bonus points tonight for playing two classes up with uh, Nevada, but they did lose. <clears throat> and we welcome to the show now Tipton head football coach, uh, William Duke. Coach Duke, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. Coach, get a big win tonight. Uh, tell us about tonight's contest. Uh, we went to Fayette tonight, played a very good Fayette Falcon football team. Their starting running back was averaging like nine yards to carry so far this year. Uh, great, great running back. They have a tandem with two kids there, Carter Roman and Micah Estes. Those guys run the ball very well. They're very confident in what they do. Uh, they believe in their head coach, Cole Hinton, and uh, it was homecoming night for them. So we knew it was going to be for us, but... The Tipton Cardinals showed up and uh, played very, very unselfish, fast-paced, physical football. Coach, you come out of tonight's game relatively healthy? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks to God. Good. Well, who, who are some of your guys that really kind of stood out for you? Well, I think it starts with the offensive line, and as we go from left to right, you got Woody Weekend, who's a junior, Sam Duke, who's a junior, Nick Wolf, who's a junior. Ben Beshin, who's a junior, and then Chance Beecher, who's a sophomore, followed by our tight end, Ty Vick. Coach, is you? Shots out there, also a younger classman. Wow. So you guys are relatively young. Yes, sir. Uh, the senior running back, uh, number eight, Lucas Gassley in the backfield, who had a big night at five touchdowns on the ground. Coach, at what point during the season – do you kind of start peeking at that district? Right now you're sitting atop that district. Now your score's not been updated, but you're not going to go down. But uh, what, at what point do you kind of start to peek at that and, and maybe get a home game and maybe get a bye? Well, Michigan has it set up now. So in class one, there are, you know, there are, we have a 10 team district. So we were just kind of talking about that on the bus right home. I'm still at the bus. It's boys. Yeah, I apologize. Um, 
not really sure how how seven, eight, nine, and ten are going to work for a playing game. I mean, we obviously look at it. The players look at it. Bishop puts it out there and calculates points, and the you know, kids are looking at it. So we address it with our team, but really we address it to the point of we can only control what we do on a Friday night. We can't control what anybody else does. So while those distant points, you know, we, we notice it, we don't focus on it. As you look forward to next week, uh, you're at Lynn. Uh, what do you know about Lynn, and what are you going to have to do to come out on top? Uh, Lynn is a, this is the first year of varsity. Uh, Coach Steve Sampson has a, a long history of coaching. Played at JC when they were very successful. Uh, Coach Hickman is his defensive coordinator. He, he's coached quite a lot. I mean, those two guys have have coached a long, long time, and I, I respect the heck out of Coach Hickman down there. He's a defensive coordinator, and you know, putting together a program like that, they get a win already in the first year. You know, when we see them on film, they have some kids that are fast. They have some kids that are playing hard. Uh, I think you, you go anytime you go somewhere on a Friday night, it's not easy to win a football game. Are they going to just forfeit and give us a give us a win? Absolutely not. Coach Sampson and Coach Hickman are going to have these guys ready to go, and we're going to have to have a great week of preparation. Coach, talk a little bit about your conference, uh, if you're in a conference, and, and where where it sits right now. We are actually in the Central State Aid. It's the first year for it. So this was a conference game for us, just like last week against Harrisburg. You know, our last uh, several games of the year are all conference games. And uh, Russellville's in there. South Callaway is in there. Lynn, Fayette, uh, Harrisburg, us. You know, there are other teams, but they don't play football. Um Eugene and Bloomfield. Hopefully they will get football and then that will round out the conference. But super competitive conference. You know, South Callaway's been class two for a long time. Been very successful. Russellville's doing great things. You know, I think they went and beat class four after earlier this year. So every week is very, very difficult. Well outstanding. Well, coach, uh, a friend of the show. I greatly appreciate you yep. being generous here with your time and I look forward to our next visit and good luck. Uh, uh, next week at Lynn, and, and I know we'll talk again. I appreciate it. I'll be with you, brother. Hey, you too. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Bye. Coach William Duke there from Tipton. They are 5-1 and one on the season, and you look at that that district that they are in. Uh, they're sitting atop that district right now. They're class one. You know, their only losses to a Lamar team before Lamar kind of started to skid, and that was back in week three where they got shut out. Um, you know, if you look at that district that Tipton, the Cardinals are in, they got Salisbury's sitting at number two, they're five and one. Then West Strand, three and two. And a lot of these have not updated their scores from tonight. Russellville, Marceline, Harrisburg, Lynn, Crestridge, Fayette, and Cole Camp. So it went tonight over Fayette, but they're just four, one and four, one and five now. But that's a 10 team district. So I would assume that seven would play 10 and eight would play nine the, the week before, then they would go into that bracket of eight and uh, Tipton would get, I would assume the, uh, the eight, nine winner, but don't correct me or don't quote me on that because Misha, well, it's Misha. So, you just, you never know what's going to happen there. So, hey, you're listening to the Missouri Sports Network at MissouriSportsNetwork.com, where everyone has a home field advantage. Certainly that you've tuned in. Presented by Lyona Labor's Local 663, Doke Propane, and Bambino's Italian Cafe. Hey, come out Monday. Doors open at 11. Food's usually ready by about 11.15, 11.30. Uh, coaches arrive around 11.30, 11.45. They get their food. It's a buffet-style Italian food. Um, it's 10 bucks. And then the coaches from the area high schools will speak. It's at Bambino's Italian Cafe on East Battlefield and Lone Pine. We'll take a quick time out, come back, and we'll run through the scores again, and then we'll get out of your hair. But wherever you're listening from, hey, we appreciate it. Let us know. If there's something we need to change up, something 
I've had people tell me, hey, you need to go to midnight. I'm not going to midnight. I'm, I'm out of breath by 11 o'clock. But hey, keep it right here on the Missouri Sports Network. We'll be right back after this. I'll have the avocado toast minus the avocado. So, toast. Yeah. Everything. and a high-tech Chevy SUV. Why is Chevy making affordable vehicles connected by OnStar? It's so together, we can do more. We believe banking should make your life greater. It starts with affordable options to meet today's needs and tomorrow's dreams. From smart account options that fit your style to flexible loans for what comes next. It means convenient ways to access and manage your money whenever you need it and wherever you're headed. Most of all, it takes great support. Someone you can count on for trusted guidance and to be there for you every step of the way. Great options, great convenience, great support for life. Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Friday Night Live here on the Missouri Sports Network. Certainly glad that you have tuned in. Go to scoreboardguide.net. Actually, just go to MissouriSportsNetwork.com. Click on the Scoreboard Guy link, and you'll get all the high school football scoreboard shows. And we'll, our scores, and we'll run through them here one more time before we get out of your hair. It is 10.50 here on Friday night, October the 4th, 2024. And I know my dad's not listening. He's been well asleep, but he, he celebrated his 81st birthday today. So if you see Mr. Newcomb, uh, tell him uh, happy birthday. On the scoreboard from Thursday night, Marquette over Hazelwood East 24 to 17. It was Knicks over Kickapoo 48 to 13. Parkview shuts out Springfield Central 48 0. Wright City also shuts out Veritas Christian 45 0. On the Bambinos Italian Cafe Friday scoreboard in eight-man football was Appleton City over Osceola, 62-20. to Sorry. My apologies. Uh, Archie over Drexel, 57-6. Again, these are scores from tonight. I do apologize. I'm working on getting a coach in on the air here before we go off the air. Hey, but drop us a line. Sign up and follow us. You can message us at Missouri underscore sports. or at scoreboard guy here. And we welcome to the show now, Logan Rogersville head football coach, Matt, Mark Talbert. Coach, hey, big win tonight, congratulations. Thank you, it was, a, it was a wild one. It was one of those crazy emotional roller coaster type games. Well, tell us about it. 29 to 23 was the final, and it was back and forth all the time, but uh, uh, the Wildcats get the win. Tell us about the game, especially down the stretch. Yeah, we, uh, we, we kind of struggled early, and uh, we had a really good uh, big play out of our junior quarterback, Sam Freeze, and, and uh, had a great run down the sideline, scored a touchdown, and well, that was really kind of our only offensive success to speak of in the first half, and, and honestly through the third quarter, and, uh, and then we got into the fourth quarter, and at the beginning of the fourth quarter, it was 23-7, to seven, and... Um, we just kind of got into empty and, and decided we were going to try to press the ball vertically down the field and, and hit a big play. And then 
uh, came back on the next drive and hit a big one. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you could just see hope start to grow in our team. And, and with eight minutes left to go in the game, it was 29, 23 at that point. Wow. So how did you, uh, your defense obviously played well. What did you make any changes at half or, uh, to kind of, kind of hold them right there at that 23? No, uh, it, you know, defensively, we just, we've got a, we've got a bunch of, uh, a young men that play really, really tough defense right now. And, and Hillcrest, I think had some momentum and had some hope and, and we just couldn't break, we couldn't break that momentum. And, uh, you know, finally took a big play offensively and, and threw a ball down our sideline and Sky Vaughn, our freshman receiver, uh, caught it for about, oh, I don't know, 70 yards or something like that for a touchdown. And, and that just seemed to break the, the, the cap off the top of it. And then defensively, you know, at that point when momentum shifts, um, all of a sudden big plays start having on defense. And, and that's what we saw. Uh, who were some of the guys that, that really played well tonight that kind of stood out to you as a head coach? Yeah, like I said, Sam Freeze had a huge run, uh, touchdown in the first half. And then um, Gaz Mantic, our other quarterback, our freshman, he threw, uh, I want to say two or three. I can't remember what our last score was um, to, to take the lead. Uh, but then uh, Sky Vaughn had some really nice catches. Um, and then Lucas Paris had a, had a great grab at the end of the game to kind of put us in the territory to, to go ahead and kneel out the clock. Uh, but we, we had several uh, big time plays. Gabe Hale had an interception uh, right over the middle. Uh, Cash Clark had a nice interception. And so um, just a well-rounded team team win. Coach, you come out of tonight's game relatively healthy? We did, yes. We stayed healthy tonight, which is a blessing. Now, two and four on the season. Now you've got Marshfield at, at – you know, a, a former conference member, but still a conference member, as I understand it. Um, what do you What do you know about the Blue Jays? Well, I know the Blue Jays have had uh, some of the set the success that we didn't have early in the year, and uh, they beat their non conference teams. and And you know, unfortunately, we just kind of weren't ready to play those games yet. And, you know, whether that was my fault or just the fault of having a really young team, we just weren't quite there yet. Um, you know, a bunch of juniors that had hadn't played on varsity and then playing some pros, freshmen and sophomores. And, and Marshall's kind of the opposite of that. They kind of went through that last year. Uh, they played a bunch of kids last year. And so they were, they were ready to win those games early in the year and, uh, and did. And, and, you know, they're a nice running team. They've kind of changed their, their whole identity offensively and are, are running a single wing offense and doing a really good job with that. And they always play, uh, you know, a really aggressive style of defense. So we'll be anxious to, to get in and break down the film and see what we see there. Now you're over halfway through the season here in this new conference. What are your thoughts at this point on on the conference? Yeah, it's a tough transition for us, and we know that. Um, you know, and I, but unfortunately our, our community has grown just enough to where we're a class four community, and we're going to stay there. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't grown enough to where – you know, it, it really puts us in the center of class four, which is where, you know, ultimately you'd like to be um, center top. And, and so we've got some growing pains and, and teams like Carl Junction have been playing Web City and, uh, you know, Nixa and teams like that. And, you know, when they play Rogersville, that's a little different, different game for them. And uh, the same with Branson, you know, with the, the schedule they've been playing in the COC and, and West Plains in the OC. And, and even tonight against Hillcrest, I mean, Hillcrest is a team that's, that's playing really, really good competition for the last, you know, seven or eight years. And not that we haven't been playing good competition. It's just a little bit faster game. That's kind of what I'm seeing. Coach, at what point do you kind of start, you know, looking maybe at the district standing and say, hey, if we can move up here. I mean, you know, next week's a big game for you with Marshall. Yeah, being absolutely. In your district. We, we, want to, we want to try to host a game, and that that's a big deal for us. And, Winter and week 10 game, that's kind of been elusive for us. And, and unfortunately, you know, Hillcrest has gotten us twice and Monette got us once. And those were games we believed that we could have and should have won and, and weren't able to get them. And, and so hopefully this move to the conference kind of, um, you know, gives us the confidence in, in beating a Hillcrest during a regular season and, and, you know, playing some tougher teams that, yeah, by week 10, we're ready to win one of those games. Well, outstanding. Well, Coach, uh, uh, congratulations on, on a big victory tonight, and I was watching it going back and forth, and I thought, okay, this is 
and I got that final and I said, I think I've got coach Talbert's number in my phone and, and, uh, it, it's a tremendous win for you. Congratulations, and thanks for being part of the show tonight. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited for our kids and our community. It's it's uh, it's been a tough couple of years, and, and we're just so excited to have a win tonight. Outstanding. Well, congratulations, and we'll talk to you soon, and we'll see you at the uh, quarterback club. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Coach. Right. Coach Mark Talbert there is they uh, they get a big win. They're 2-4 and four now, and that district – Everybody but Monette has updated their score. So Carl Junction sits atop that district at four and two. West Plains is in second, but uh, Bolivar beat them tonight. Um, so Bolivar will jump them. But points wise, they're in third place right now. Marshfield uh, is sitting at fourth, and then Logan Rogers. So that's a big game next week when they they host Marshfield next week. That'll be an opportunity there for them to jump into that four spot. Uh, but they they may end up playing Mar Marshfield again. Uh, either way, they could play Marshfield again, win or lose. But anyway, well, there's not enough time to get through all the scores. Again, I'll read as many as I can here. I'm not sure exactly where we stopped, but I've got a good idea. Uh, it was in eight-man, it was Greenfield over Jasper, 48-6. to six. Bishop LeBlond over Kansas City's Christian, 64-24. King City defeats North Andrew, 36-30. Lockwood shuts out Liberal 63-0. New, ha New Heights over Plattsburgh, 54-28. Rich Hill defeats Northland Christian, 60-28. Northwest over North Shelby, 52-42. Paris over Knox County. Uh, Paris over Knox County, 60-20. St. Joe Christian defeats Pat Pattonsburg, 70-38. Albany over Princeton, 96-46. Rockport defeats West Nottaway, 66-42. Schuyler County over Southwest, 70-22. Hard Central defeats Slater, 60-12. Platte Valley over South Holt, 60-12. It was St. Paul Lutheran over Sweet Springs, 62-60. Worth County shuts out Stanbury, 58-0. And Tarkio defeats Stewartsville, 48 -0. Two, six. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to bring us to an end of the show. You've been listening to Friday Night Live here on the Missouri Sports Network. Hey, go get the scores at MissouriSportsNetwork.com where everyone has a home field advantage. I want to send out a thank you. To all the coaches, uh, you know what? There they are. Judd Nager from Valley Catholic. Nick Bear from Seckman High School. Matt Webb from Maryville High School. Frank Tristan from Tipton High School. William Duke. I'm sorry, Frank Tristan from Glendale High School. William Duke from Tipton High School. And Mark Talbert from Logan Rogersville. All part of the show tonight, along with Alan Hilliard from Alan Hilliard Sports. This show will rerun or replay tomorrow, but if you want to listen to it again tonight, hey, just go to the YouTube page, go to Missouri Sports Network on YouTube, subscribe, and listen to the show right there, or go to our Facebook page and like us, and hey, do both. And sign up, as always, to follow us on Twitter at Missouri underscore sports and at Scoreboard Guy. Hey, and as always, the Missouri State Highway Patrol reminds us, hey, take that three seconds and buckle up. It's three seconds that could save your life. Be safe, be smart, and be here tomorrow. Good night. God bless. <laughs>